Scout 200. Today is Monday, March 9th, okay, and 2020. And uh, so uh, I know, you know, paramount in your minds right now is, you know, what is going to happen to you um, as a USA stu USC student um, with um, the emergency preparedness that's going, going around right now uh, for the uh, possibility of having uh, campus closure and the coronavirus. So um, um, I want to, you know, put your fears to rest. Okay, we are totally prepared, and particularly you guys that have chosen to do JRO 200. We've been doing this all semester, so there will be zero interruption, and you will continue to, to cruise along. Okay, so it's you, you are super positioned, and you'll have to tell your friends all about this. Okay, alrighty. So we're going to continue on with the um, with the training that we're providing you in this course, and uh, so we um, already discussed the fact that there are a lot of old people in the world, um, uh, particularly in westernized countries like the U.S. There are a lot of older people. Um, um, these older people become more dependent. Okay, um, they are more likely to suffer from different types of chronic disease that give them disability that dramatically increases their dependency. Okay. And um, and as a consequence, um, they need help. And so the theme of uh, the lecture this week is caregiving. Okay, and 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 um, what we are um, having to look at, what we are staring down the barrel of over the next thirty years. Okay, alrighty. So um, like I said, we we set you up in terms of you guys not reproducing, um, people living longer, population aging. We talked about the, the chronic diseases of aging. Um, uh, ending in the one that happens the latest in life, okay, in the 80s and 90s, uh, which is uh, dementia. And uh, and the cost of that, 60 grand a year if you put somebody in a facility, okay. And now we're jumping into caregiving, <clears throat> okay. All right, so my lecture will go right here, okay. Um, I thought this was a, a beautiful drawing right here, okay. Um, it was taken from this source right here, from ARP, okay. And it, and it does illustrate um, the the contract that we have with ourselves and that being where um, your mom raises you you are very dependent on her okay and then it goes full circle and then you will care for your mom okay um, and that's the ideal situation but uh, because of uh, changes in reproduction uh, you guys don't have as many babies then um, the the burden falls on fewer and fewer people, and it's a, it's a very difficult burden. Okay, so this is the, the reading right here. So it's a pretty limited um, amount of work that we have for you to do this week, okay? And then it's, again, supported down here. So here's the take-home message, okay? Who's going to take care of mom, as we illustrate up here in this in this photograph, okay? And we see that, um, I, as I indicated, you know, over the next um, 30 years, okay, going out to 20,050, we see that the number of people, caregivers like yourself, okay, like me caring for my mom, like me now caring for my next door neighbor, okay, he's in his 80s and he's having nothing but trouble, okay, so um, so the number of us that are around, okay, um, as a ratio, okay, for the person, people that need it, okay, and so this is the caregiving ratio, okay, and we see here, there were a lot of people around, okay? A lot of younger people around. And now, fewer and fewer younger people people to take care of the older people. So this ratio goes down and down and down. So that's an, an enormous burden, okay? Just me dealing with my next door neighbor takes me away from, from uh, my family. Um, it takes me away from doing things at work. Time is money, okay? All right, and that's what that's all about. So if we go into the actual article, Again, it's a simple read. This is the PDF file uh, supplied by AARP. Okay, and um, it uh, it you know much like the graph we showed you, we see this this, this sharp decline that happened is happening by 2030, and even more so by tw uh, 2050, a fewer and fewer fewer caregivers. And so they kind of go through the numbers here. Okay, they talk about what it what it is that people need. Um, these are long term services and support. Okay. This is getting somebody to the doctor if they need it, okay? This is some getting somebody bathed if they need it, but they, if they can no longer do the activities of daily living. 
Um, this is paying their bills for them, okay? This is getting them groceries, this is getting them food, getting their house clean, on and on and on. All things that, you know, your parents take care of for you, um, that someday you're going to have to step up and help them take care of. And that's just the way of the world. But um, the, the reality is, you know, there's a good chance with our global world, okay, that, you know, um, you're going to move, okay? And then um, it's going to be difficult to find somebody to do that caregiving. So this is actually a an entrepreneurial opportunity. And there are lots and lots and lots of companies that are stepping up, okay? Um, and patient advocates, advocates that will that will deal with all of the billing services um, um, are, you know, as as a um, consultant, are char charging anywhere from uh, fifty to two hundred dollars an hour to get this kind of work done. So this is a huge opportunity. Okay, so long term services and support. This is what it's all about. Okay, so um, the family is the backbone of this. Okay, so we know that, and um, when we look at the family, okay. And we scroll down and we, they talk about the diff different types of ser services and family availability. Um, this is the age range that is the target. And sh I'm sure you're looking at this with your parents and your grandparents, okay? And not only is, is it this age range, okay? But we see that um, nearly two thirds of all um, family caregivers are female, okay? So 65% of the caregivers are female, okay? And, um, you know, a, a typical 49-year-old woman that is doing caregiving for her parent or maybe for an aunt and uncle. Um, my mom was spread thin because she had aunts and uncles that did not have children. So she had to do her own parents and her aunties and uncles, okay? Um, you're spending 20 hours a week providing services and care, and this is completely unpaid, okay? This is volunteer work, okay? It's part of our social contract that we have with our parents. And it wears you out. When my mom finally did, did get sick, I was working at USC. She was up in Brea. I would drive there. Then I would come home to Laguna de Gal and help with my wife and children. And of course, Julie was really sick as well with her leukemia. So um, these are difficult times, you know, and you, you rise to up and, and, and you deal with it. Okay. All right. So this, again, goes with um, the size. Okay. Um, and who's doing what. Okay. In the description of um, uh, this career track, home health aides, okay, um, are usually 45 years and older, 50%, okay, um, and um, it just goes through and it starts documenting the numbers, okay, and I'm not going to read those numbers for you, okay, in terms of economics, okay. Alrighty, um, so a lot of you guys are business majors, okay, these are um, economic models about this career track, okay, and um, and um, and what it all means. So you can kind of read through this and, and there's appendices at the bottom that explain everything, okay? Um, so then what they do is they just kind of, they go through the, um, what has happened historically. And this is just a reiteration. It's, it's um, typed up, um, but it reflects what's going on um, and when we look at uh, the figures right here, okay? So with, again, this caregiver support ratio as we showed right here, okay? Um, when there were a lot of, People from my generation, there were more caregivers, okay? But then we're getting older and there's a precipitous drop now um, in because we now need care. And a lot of us, like myself, had two kids, you know? A lot of people had one kid, okay? And so you get out here into the 80s and there's a good chance that one of your children will have died, <laughs> sadly. And um, and so the, the, the amount of support is, is, is dramatically reduced. And that's what that's all about. Um, this is a reiteration, okay? of aging, aged populations. We're looking at the, uh, the, um, the age group of, um, of boomers and you know, how we are affecting society. This is my generation. And you can see here that you know, um, we'll be 100 years old in 2050. Okay? And there'll be a lot of us. There'll be a lot of us that, that need a lot of care. All right, so that's what that's all about. So <clears throat> the caregiver support ratio is plummeting okay? as we transition into the oldest group, the fastest growing age group in our country, the 80 and above, okay? All righty, so this shows you right here. Um, uh, again, the projected age of 80 plus above population, okay? And it, it's going up and up and up as a, as a percentage, okay? All righty. Okay, so I'm just gonna scroll through here, get to the discussion right here. Um, these are the, the, the appendices. I think this is particularly relevant. You look at different states and you think about the demographics in each state, okay? 
and we see these transitions out to 2050 of this ratio. And this is, again, the entire United States right here. And then you can kind of look at individual states, okay? States that are known for having more older people, okay, like Florida, are trans transitioning downward, okay, because there's a lot more dependence. Uh, there's a lot of retirement communities in Arizona, and you see that it's transitioning downward. And then you look out in um, very rural communities, okay, and where where people tend to um, only go there to retire and flee. So places like Montana, okay. All right, so um, that's your reading, okay. Um, then you come down here, okay. Again, multiple browsers open. You do your readings quiz, okay. You're going to uh, do fine on that. Um, and then we have a discussion that is based all about caregiving. And, you know, what's great about USC is we are a global university. And so there's a lot of caregiving perspectives. Um, and so uh, in the training that we provide at the Davis School, um, there's an opportunity out there to um, uh, create um, uh, services and care, okay, a business opportunity, uh, entrepreneurial, where you, um, or will you tap into the culture of unique groups that are represented in the Southern California community. And um, because every culture is different in terms of what you can and can't do in terms of caregiving, what is the social norm? And once you tap into that, then you can tap into a very large community, community and, and deliver, deliver culturally appropriate care, okay? Alrighty, that's what that's all about. The only thing that's coming up, okay, that should be on your radar on this class is we have, and you guys all got your midterm done, thank you, okay? We have um, March 30th is our next little short paper. I'm going to do a separate how-to video for that, so you guys will be dialed in, okay? Um, please email us if you have any concerns about what's going on on campus. Um, um, I, will, I will let you know, Julia, will let you know as much as we know. And uh, we're here. Um, your parents can contact us, whatever it is. We're here to help during this, this very difficult time. Um, just a, you know, a little biology. Um, uh, if a lot of you don't understand what a virus is, this, this virus gets in, and what it does is it has a mechanism for inserting its either RNA or DNA, okay, into your cells, into your rapidly dividing cells, and then as your uh, rapidly dividing cells, the ones like that line your sinuses, the ones that line your lungs, the ones that line your GI tract, um, as they divide, then they each cell division trans makes a new uh, DNA that has your DNA, but also has the virus DNA. And then um, uh, at a trigger point, then all of a sudden you become, your cells become a factory for making new viruses. Um, and the viruses get released all throughout your body. And then and, and it's up to your immune system to kick into gear and, um, and kill that off and kill off the cells that have the virus. So that's what it's all about. Um, if we create a vaccination, then what it is, is it's a way of alerting your immune system before you get infected, okay? So that you now have an army of immune uh, cells that will go in there and attack the real deal if you do get infected, okay? Um, and that's the whole basis of the vaccination. You know, right now you may, you know, for example, only have maybe 20 cells of your immune system, your white blood cells that are destined to attack a virus like the coronavirus. But if I vaccinate you, those 20 cells will turn into, um, you know, two and a half million cells, and they just sit there and wait for the real deal to come in, okay? And that's why a vaccination is so important. Okay, so um, you guys hang in there. Don't worry. We're going to get through this.